ka, nagtatanong sa mga pungsoy, <laughs> pungsoy expert, o yung mga manguhula. But I mean, we're, we're, we have a greater source of guidance. Amen? And uh, we need to hear from the Lord. We want to know what to do this uh, 2022. And so, to start this amazing series, can we all give a warm welcome to our pastor, Pastor Jerome Campo. Thank you, Pastor John. Thank you, everybody, for coming to church first Sunday of the year. Why don't you congratulate the next person? Congratulations, you went to church first Sunday of the year. <laughs> and uh, I think it's important that you start the year right. So <clears throat> uh, there's so many things that I wanted to share and uh, when we, before we ended the year, I had a time just to seek the Lord. And uh, sa dami ng gusto kong share it turned out to be a series. And so we are going, going to do this series. We start our prophetic month this year. Every year we do this for the last 20 years. The f- January is a month where we seek the Lord. So there will be further announcements and explanations after this. We will have a, I'm encouraging everyone to participate on a 21-day fast that we do every year, usually do it for seven days. But this particular year, I had a sense that the Lord wants us to do a 21-day fast. So we're going to do a 21-day fast, okay? Now, uh, I know that some of you might think, oh, that's impossible. In one day lang na hindi kumain, it's, it's already a big uh, challenge for me. Paano pa kayo 21 days? Now, there are several ways you can do the fast. Uh, uh, Pastor John will explain it later. You don't have to become like Moses. You don't have to force yourself, right? And, but you have to make a commitment to seek the Lord for seven days, uh, for 21 days. And uh, that's why this whole series of teaching, I think, will be so vital and important to guide us throughout the whole month. Now, we will start the prophetic praying for people. And uh, before we did it online, I think a, a year and a half ago or two years ago, uh, no next start the pandemic. But this time, we will only do it on site. Now, I heard from the government that starting tomorrow, it's alert level 3. And uh, I hindi ko nga alam ano na ibig sabihin ng alert level 3. <laughs> it's become so confusing. I, I, I always thought we're already at alert level 1, eh, pero pala 2 pa pala. Pero we'll back, back to 3. Pero we heard for our guidelines, we'll back to 30% capacity in the church. So that would mean less than 60 people will be able to come to church. And so I would suggest that you... You know, medyo nilax na namin yung registration online, pero ngayon you really have to register kasi if we reach capacity, uh, just to submit to the government, we will not be able to let you in. So please register. We still don't have children's church. Uh, they canceled again the face-to-face classes in the school starting tomorrow. And your sister ko, si Sharon, is just so tuwan-tuwa siya. Yay! No face-to-face kasi she's been a teacher for more than three decades now and uh, she says, you know, she teaches at Brent, so they have to have this two-hour commute uh, 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 drive from, from Quezon City all the way to Laguna every day when they do face-to-face. Noong nalaman niyang hindi natuloy yung face-to-face, tuwang tuwa siya, no? Hindi dahil sa may, may Omicron at may spike, hindi dahil dun sa setup. Anyway, I know you've all been used to uh, going online and uh, our friends online. Why don't you clap to the people watching online? Yes, we welcome you. Though. Come on, sing pa- welcome not all those watching online. You are the faithful watchers online. <clears throat> when we get to heaven, sana hindi na kayo online, no? sana on-site na kayo. <clears throat> anyway, I'd like to say, uh, let, me, let me just give you a, a warning. This is a very strong message this morning. And the more I read it, over and over again, the more I felt like the Lord is into this word. And so, uh, I entitled the message, It's Time to Hear God's Voice. It's time to hear God's voice. Now, many times we say, I, I, I'd love to hear if God would say something to me. How would you, how would you like to hear the voice of the Lord? No? I mean, really like, you know, uh, a veil <laughs> or God's voice would be so, so scary. Let's all stand up. And so let's read 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 1. There was a time in the Bible that 
people had a hard time hearing the word of the voice of the Lord. And this was the time of Samuel. And Samuel was a boy committed to uh, serve in the temple by his mother. And this was the time that Samuel, as we all know, is one of the greatest prophets who ever lived. You know, he was the start of the, you know, the last of the judges before the kings came in into Israel. <clears throat> and it says, now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. Now that's it. Don't sit down yet. I just like to describe what is, do you mean rare? Uh, the Hebrew word for rare is, you know, you, you always think rare, it's limited supply. But really the word rare is precious, like gold or diamond. You know, you don't get diamonds very, very often. You don't get those uh, precious stones very often. It's, it, the word rare there means very valuable. And so the word of the Lord was very important at that time. And then let, let's go on to read on Amos chapter 8, verses 10 to 12. This is another part of the Old Testament where Amos the prophet prophesies to what is happening in Israel at that time. And I'd like, I'll describe it to you as we, as we study it. It says, this, Amos says in a prophetic word, Look, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send a famine throughout the land, not a famine of food or a thirst for water, but a fa rather a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. People will stagger from sea to sea, from north to east. They will run back and forth searching for a message from the Lord, but they won't find it. Let's pray. Father, we ask you, Lord, that you open our ears to hear and our eyes to see what you have for us this morning. And maybe, Father God, open our hearts to the rest of the year 2022, what you are about to do. We thank you, Lord, for making us... Uh, bringing us here, Lord, to hear your words. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take your seat. Now, Amos, the prophet, was a prophet to the northern kingdom of Israel. And, uh, and before they fell to the Assyrians, Assyrian is a growing empire during that time. And so Amos preaches a prophetic word. And the message was so powerful that God is going to punish Israel because they had turned away from God. They started to worship gold, the golden calf and other gods. And then they started to uh, turn away from the Lord. Now, under the current king, their present king at that time is Jeroboam II. The nation was very strong. They really don't feel like they need the Lord. Although trouble was on the horizon because the rising empire of Assyria is threatening them. It's just like today, right? We have this rise of another spike, another variant, and we feel that fear of threat. But the Lord told them through Amos, a day is coming and is already there. They, when the word, will, the God's word would not be heard in the land. People might search for it. They would look for everywhere from east to west, north to south, but they will never find a message from the Lord. In Amos' day, the word of the Lord was brought through the prophets and it's like God was saying during that time, the prophets will be silenced during this time of threat. And God would no longer be speaking to the people because they, they would feel they will be abandoned. Now, that is such a terrible, terrible uh, statement, prophetic word. What if God doesn't speak anymore? Could you think about that? What if God never speaks to us anymore? What if God never declares his word anymore? Uh, would, it, would we really care? Do we really even feel that the Lord is speaking to us? What happens to you? What happens to me if we never hear the word of the Lord anymore? What happens to our nation? What happens to this world? What happens to this generation? What if God didn't speak anymore? What if we go everywhere through the internet, we search it from morning till evening, and we never find a word from the Lord? What if we go through every nation in the world today, and we never hear a message from the Lord. You see, how do you feel if someone you love never speaks to you? How do you feel if someone you love never speaks to you? Your friend gives you a silent treatment. No, my granddaughter could not stand it. You know, Reese, why are you not talking to me? <laughs> why are you so quiet? <laughs> my granddaughter could not stand it. I could imagine that if you have somebody that you love, 
and she or he could not speak to you, how would you feel? What if God gives us the silent treatment for not hearing, for not listening? Now, I'd like to make an observation in history that God's word has been marginalized, criticized, abused, canceled, twisted from all political purposes, you know, called as old-fashioned, weaponized for personal greed, and they've done everything about the word of God, but barely have people ever listened to it. Will God ever speak to a generation who has done this to his word? Maybe the better question is, has God ever been silenced? Because the description in Amos, it's not a famine of the word of God, but it's called, the prophecy is, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will send a famine throughout the world, a famine not of food or thirst for water, but rather a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. So there will be no famine of the word of God, but the famine will be hearing the words of the Lord. That's, that's totally different. God's word will be there. A message will be there, but there will be nobody listening to it. There will be a famine, all right, but it's not of God speaking, but a famine of man listening. Are we seeing this already? Are we already seeing it all over the world? There are more voices in the culture that are screamed at us every day, every minute, 24-7. Everybody's screaming at us. Even when people practice religion, their religiosity is filled with superstition carried from generation to generation, absolutely devoid from the word of the Lord. Even when we practice politics, God's word is set aside. His commandments deemed irrelevant. What is important is winnability. It's either we use God's word to endorse or ignore it, set it aside because it is deemed irrelevant in governing a nation. I want to give an announcement to you, brothers and sisters. God is not silent. God is never silent. We haven't been hearing, uh, or we, we maybe we heard all right, but we have chosen not to listen to the word. Culture is heard, politicians are heard, religious leaders are heard, educators are heard, entertainers are heard, but not God anymore. There is a famine. It's not a famine of water. It's not a famine of food. It's not a famine of entertainment. Well, it was nice during the lockdown. Somehow, it is a little bit muted, entertainment is. But God somehow, with a loudspeaker, globally speaking, be still, world, and know that I am God. This whole pandemic is a statement that God can eradicate this whole mankind with a snap of a finger. God's power is still on his throne, and he's still exercising the famine it's not from the source. The famine is in the receiving of the word of God. It's like when food is available, but your stomach cannot digest it. Can you imagine overflowing food, but you can't eat? It's like dying of thirst while you're completely submerged in the ocean of water. It's the parable of the starving baker. That's why we start this year. I want to tell you, brothers and sisters, that's why I really felt very, very strongly we start this year in honing, in refining our ability to hear the word of the Lord. How many of you believe you need to hear the voice of the Lord? Amen. How many of you really feel that at this time of your life, of your career, of your job, of your marriage, you need to hear the voice of the Lord? More than any time in your history, we need to hear the word of the Lord. And I, I submit to you that if we, even though God speaks, even he's not silent, but if we cannot hear, then the word of the Lord will not have an impact in our lives. Now, in the New Testament, it's a major contrast from the prophet Amos. Because God says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now, he is saying, that the words of the Lord can be compared to like bread. If you need bread in the morning, bread at noon, and bread in the evening, so shall we need the word of the Lord. But that the word of the Lord will be available more than bread in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. Jesus, this is a quote. Jesus says, it is written. Do you know this quote came from Deuteronomy chapter 8? When God provided manna, you know, that heavenly bread. 
every morning for 40 years in the wilderness. Can you imagine? Wake up in the morning, you have bread to eat. All you have to do is pick it up. In Deuteronomy 8, verse 3, the purpose of God providing manna to the Israelites every day for 40 years, it says, So he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manna which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man shall not live by bread alone. But man lives by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So the most important factor of your future right now, I'm going to tell this as emphatically as I can say, the most important factor of your future is not your background, is not your career, is not your race, it's not your education. The most important factor is not the level of your income or nor the opinions of people around you or what your parents say. The most important factor of your future today is the ability to hear from God. If we can hear from the Lord, then we can navigate through this pandemic. Then we, can, we will not be afraid of the future. What does God say about your life? What is God saying about your marriage? What is God saying about your career? What is God saying about your family? What is God saying about your future? Nothing is more important in your life than, than this. Learning to hear the voice of the Lord. To distinguish it from Satan's voice. To be able to know that if it's people's voice, if it's their opinion, or it's God's opinion. Or whether it's my own desire or if it's God's desire. Nothing is more important. And I tell you, you are going to be blessed with this series. After the end, my, my desire for you for the next few weeks is for us to refine and hone our ability to hear from the Lord. Amen? And therefore, be able to uh, face our fears and not be afraid. So what's the problem with us today? What's the problem with this generation? Why can't we hear him speak? Why is this prophetic word so real today? Did God have laryngitis? Did God have a sore throat? Can't he speak louder today? You know, why can't we hear God on a daily basis, on a regular basis? The only answer is summarized in this, because we are not tuned in. You know, we all know when you say radio signals, the radio broadcast never stops. The radio signals are always there. And the only way for you to see that the radio signal or the free, uh, is, is to tune into the frequency. If you don't tune into the frequency, they can be speaking for like more than a month, but you'll never hear a single word. The only time you can hear the words if it's you tune in to the frequency is the same with God. God is always speaking. God is a word for your life. God is a word for your marriage. God is a word for your future. God is a word for your career. God is a word for your relationships. God is a word for every single detail of your life. But how come we're not hearing it? Because we're not tuned in. We're in a different frequency. You know, unless we develop the ability to tune in to God and become intimate with Him to the point of naturally hearing His voice, it's going to be difficult. We will experience the famine. Now, we are in a prophetic month, and we will both be seeking God and seeking His face. You know, just like the boy Samuel, which I read uh, when we opened this message. Eli the priest was the one in charge of Samuel. He was, you know, the high priest. And Samuel was just a boy, probably around 10 to 12 years old. And he was, he was uh, uh, brought to the temple, asked to serve in the temple for the rest of his life. And so, and Samuel advised him a very simple statement I would advise to you right now. First Samuel chapter 3, verse 9. Because he heard the voice of the Lord two times, three times, and then he says he thought it was, it was Eli. And, Sam, and Eli said to Samuel in verse 9, Go lie down, and it shall be if he calls to you, then you shall say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. And Samuel and laid down in his place. Do you know you don't have to be in, an, in a painful and uh, uncomfortable situation or or, or you know, set up for, to hear the voice of the Lord. That's why you can be lying down, relaxing. Sometimes I used to kneel down when I pray with intensity. But now it's painful to kneel down. Right, Pastor Eric? It's harder to kneel down today. 
Because our knees are not as good as before, right? And I, don't, I can't hear the voice of the Lord when there's pain. So I would sit on my easy chair, lie down and relax, and I can hear the voice of the Lord better. Amen? Now, God is saying here, even in your most comfortable situation, you can hear the voice of the Lord. Even though you're going through the most comfortable time of your life, you can actually <coughs> hear the voice of the Lord. <coughs> so, are we ready to listen? I'm going to give to you a, thank you, John, a very simple uh, example in the Bible how someone heard the voice of the Lord. Amen? And I would submit to you, this is exactly what God is asking us this morning. It's the example of Moses. Moses heard the voice of the Lord. And uh, I, uh, just, just a personal testimony. I have walked with Jesus for almost 40 years. You know, I think, uh, I would say approximately 41 years when I since became a Christian. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, it's been longer now that I've been a Christian than I have not been a Christian. And I can tell you, I can know and recognize the voice of Jesus. I ignore him sometimes. I distract myself so I can't hear him. But I can tell you, the Lord's speaking to me. And I can tell you, I have no doubt, it's the Lord speaking to me. See, there are, un, I will be honest in times, and I can humbly admit to you, I don't know what God is saying. I don't know what God is doing. But I can tell you, every time he opens his voice to speak to me, after 40 years, I know without a doubt it is the Lord. So I would quiet myself, spend a few moments of worship, and immediately I can discern it's the voice of the Lord. See, there are seasons in our life God will be silent. <clears throat> it's a choice. When God becomes silent, there's a purpose for it. But many times He gets our attention. You know, would you like to, for God to get your attention? I'd like to do it. I like that, Lord. No, you be careful when you say that because God got Jonah's attention and he made him stay in the Blue Whale Resort for three days and three nights. You understand what I'm saying? The only way to get Jonah's attention is for a whale to gobble him up, for a big fish to gobble him up for three days and three nights. And man, he did he get Jonah's attention. So don't just say, God, could you get my attention, please? Be careful because sometimes it takes a God decides to isolate you. Isolation becomes one of his uh, tools in order for you to hear the voice of the Lord. But here is Moses. And I'd like to say it's important to recognize the voice of the Lord because of three reasons before we go to Moses. I'm sorry. Number one, when, you, when you're able to hear the voice of the Lord, you're, it proves you are a child of God. If you're able to hear the voice of God, it proves you're a child of God. Jesus says, my sheep hear my voice. John 8, 47 says, he belongs to God, hears God's voice, not just impressions, God's voice. <coughs> but he who does not belong to God does not hear it. So clear. In the other version, it says, whoever is God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. Why is it important to hear the voice of God? That you know you are a child of God, right? Because a child will hear his voice. Number two, it will protect you from mistakes. You know, I, I always used to say uh, hindsight is 2020 vision. You know, foresight is not 2020. But when God speaks to you, it prevents you from making those mistakes that you can commit. Because and that's why it says you shall live by his word. The third reason is, it is the key to a productive life. <clears throat> key a productive life. Anything that I am able to accomplish in my life is by the grace of God and because I was able to discern what God is saying at that moment. Everything that we have in the ministry was when we discern God was saying something. Nothing is more important today in first uh, uh, Sunday of January for you to be able to say, just like Samuel, speak, Lord, I am listening. Can we all say that together? Speak, Lord. Come on, say it with all your heart. Speak, Lord, I am listening. And I have absolutely no doubt he will speak to you. He will speak to you. You will hear the voice of God. So 
here's what happened to Moses. Moses, you know, you can actually divide this life in three groups of 40, 40, 40, 40. 40 years in Pharaoh's court trying to be somebody. 40 years in the wilderness trying to be nobody. And then 40 years again uh, in the desert trying to be God's somebody. So all of this 40, at the end of the, ne- the two 40 years, at the end of 80 years old, he had an encounter with the Lord. And the first time he heard the voice of the Lord in the bush. Exodus chapter 4 verse 2. And it says here, the Lord said to him, what is in your hand? And he said, a staff, right? Now, that's the second most important question I would say is, is, that you have in, in our lives. What is in your hand? What is the first most important question? Is what did you do with my son Jesus? And I hope you know the answer to that. Because if you, you've forgotten the first question, then the second question has absolutely no purpose. What is in your hand? You know? I'll, I'll just tell you the whole picture. Moses stands in front of the burning bush, walks up to it because the bush is burning, but it's not consumed. And then a voice comes out of the bush, says, remove your sandals, remove your shoes, for you're standing on holy ground. Moses removes his shoes. And then the next question is, what is in your hand? And Moses says, it's just a staff. It's a stick. It's a shepherd staff. God says, throw it down. He throws it down and it becomes a? Becomes a snake. Alam na mga bata. You know your, your children's church. It becomes a snake, right? <coughs> Something that was dead becomes alive. A stick becomes a snake. And then he says, pick it up. When he picks it up, it turns again into a? <laughs> Back into a snake, right? And so... It becomes alive again. Now, it says throw it. it uh, something that's dead becomes alive. Pick it up. Then it becomes dead again. Now, I looked at that. I said, this is one of the most strangest stories in the Bible. It says stick, throw it down, becomes a snake. Pick it up, becomes a snake, stick again. What is that all about? What's the purpose of that? No? Now, I know a couple of things when God performs a miracle. Number one, God does not perform a miracle to show off. He does not perform a miracle to show off. You know, I have a new trick. I can turn the stick into a snake. I, this is to be good when you have a, you know, a Christmas party, a New Year's Eve, and I can just go demonstrate it to you, Moses. No, God does, that doesn't show off. You know, and every, now listen to this. Every miracle is a parable, and every parable is a miracle. Now, let me repeat that. Every miracle is a parable. Every miracle has a message. Every miracle has a teaching within it, and every parable is a miracle. It's a miracle of divine truth. What I'm saying is God does not perform a miracle to show off. Number two, when God asks you a question, he already knows the answer, right? He already knows what's in the hand of Moses. Why would he ask him that question? 1,000 years before Moses was born, God already knew that Moses will be holding a staff. So why would he ask the question, what is in your hand? Now listen, listen carefully. I want you to catch this. The reason God asks you the question is for you to know what the answer is. When God asks you a question, he wants you to recognize the answer. Recognize what's in your hand. Moses, do you recognize what's in your hand? Now this is a story that's so powerful when I started to study and pray about it, the Lord started to speak to me. And the key for the interpreting of this miracle is the symbolism of the staff. What does the staff of Moses represent? It represents for me three things, three things that all of us can actually relate to. The staff, number one, represents to Moses' identity. It's a shepherd's staff. If you're holding a shepherd's staff, you will be a... Shepherd, of course. If you wear a stethoscope, you'll be probably a doctor. If you wear a white gown, you're probably a medical technician or a scientist. You know, many times, there are many symbols to the work that we do. Uh, I used to understand that if I wear a barong, I would be a congressman. (laughs) I'll be a pastor. Normally, before, if you wear a barong, you'll be a pastor, right? 
but not not alone not today you know we have modern day pastors that can wear a coat you know and because of our uh, fashionable wives they can show us wha- what to wear better amen don't i look better than 20 years ago okay <laughs> okay pa- parang hindi kayo nag-agree anyway <laughs> so it represents identity and so when when God asked Moses to throw his staff, his identity, it becomes alive. When he picks it up again, it dies again. Think about that. The second symbol of a staff is income, your income, Moses' income. In those days, you can tell a person's wealth by the number of animals he has. And so all your wealth is restored in livestock. So if you're, if you're a, a shindero, if you're a shepherd, the more sheep you have, you're going to be a rich shepherd. The lesser sheep you have, you're going to be a poorer shepherd. So it measures your income. So God is saying to Moses, throw down, lay down your income. It becomes alive. Pick it up again, it will die. The third, you know, Proverbs says, know well the condition of your flocks, which refers to the the wealth that you have, modern day translation, know your business interests well. Know the condition of your stocks, livelihood. So we have identity, we have income. The third thing that symbolizes a staff is influence. What do you use your staff as a shepherd? You move the sheep. You either pull them or you poke them. You know, you move them from point A to point B. How do you move them? You use your staff. So it measures influence. And so what is God saying to Moses? I want you to lay down your identity, your income, and your influence. Give it to me, and it will come alive. Give to me your identity. Now, I'm known as a person. I'm known as a husband like this. Give to me what you're known for. Give to me your reputation. Give to me what you think you're good at. Give to me your income. Give to me your source of living. Give to me your influence. Now, influence is really the power that is measured. Now we have what we call in the, you know, in in the in the cyberspace, in the internet, they call it influencers. Actually, they just tell you to buy more and more things, right? God is saying, What is your influence? How far is your influence? Give it to me, and it becomes alive. You pick it up again it will die one more time. God is saying to us today, this first Sunday of the year, what is your identity? What is your income? What is your influence? And no matter how great or how small, God is saying, do you know what is in your hand? Do you recognize the staff that you're holding? Your identity your income, and your influence? Do you recognize the stretch of what I have placed in your hand? And if you lay it down, it will come alive. But if you take it back, it's going to die. I've been a Christian for 40 years. When I was a young teenager, I laid down my course. I laid down my future. I laid down my income before the Lord. Basically, you know, I think five pesos a day. I have no income. I was just in high school. But I gave it all to the Lord. Somehow when you get older and you learn to do the works or the ropes of life and you become a good in business and you become good in what you're doing, you kind of pick it up again. And you kind of say, I I know how to, I know how to do this. I've been blessed. I know how to do this well. And so I don't need to hear the voice of the Lord. So I pick it up again. And then you find yourself in a situation that you cannot solve. Why? Because the stick dies one more time. And everything that you put your trust into, you know cannot be trusted because only God can be trusted. Amen? Sometimes you need to surrender everything before you know all you, all you need is God. Right? Because when he's... So because of this, I, I, I'd like to tell you the story. This is a pivotal experience of Moses. Because if this does not happen, this little story of dropping the stick, There will be no exodus. There will be no Ten Commandments. There will be no nation of Israel. Then there will be no Messiah. There will be no death on the cross. There will be no church. 
And we won't all be here this morning because of Moses listening to the voice of the Lord. What is in your hand? How did Moses do it? You don't have to have a spirit of submission first, you know. I think it's so important. Because, you know, after Moses did that, do you know in the whole book of the Bible, that staff, that stick was never ever called again Moses' staff. It started to be called the rod of God. From that moment on, that stick that was dead was not called the staff of Moses anymore. It was called the rod of God. And every single miracle that Moses performed, he did it with the rod of God. He did it. He put the rod into the Nile River and it turned into blood. He raised up the rod in front of the Red Sea and the sea opened. He used the rod and stuck, uh, stuck a rock and water gushed out of the rock and, uh, you know, fed uh, Two and a half million people with water. Now think about that. Think about that. So the rod of God has suddenly changed everything in the course of Moses' life. You, you and I need to take our identity, our income, and our influence, and we need to lay it down before the Lord. I can tell you so many stories, even in this church and in the years past, of how God turned around income, turned around identity, that they, they have lost totally their reputation, and God turned it around because they laid it before the Lord. Don't pick it up again. Don't pick it up again. Let God do with it, you know. So it starts with hearing the voice of the Lord. And throughout this whole series, we're going to talk, well, I'm going to dissect hearing the voice of the Lord. It's not just going to be the prophetic words. It's not just going to be, you know, read and study the scripture, although that is important. How many of you know so many people have studied the scripture and yet used it for their own benefit, not for what God is saying? We have to be in a position of surrender. God, let, tell me your word, and then I will decide if I will follow it. That's not surrender. Surrender is, Lord, even before you say your word, I am going to submit and obey it even before I hear, hear it. Amen? That's real submission. You don't make a decision after you hear the word of the Lord. You decide before. And so I think it's important for us to position ourselves and say, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. For the next whole month, that will be your prayer. And I urge you, you get home tonight, be quiet yourself, go to your own lazy boy, I don't know where you go, sit comfortably, and just like Samuel, tell the Lord, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. I believe God's going to speak. I believe you're going to be shocked to hear the voice of the Lord. I believe God is going to download in your life everything that you need to, to know, at least for the moment. Now, every year, we make a declaration in our church. And every year, we say, okay, this will be a year of of new beginnings. This will be something that God's going to do. And so I had been, you know, I had been stressed out just praying and seeking the Lord. And Abel knows this, that, you know, sometimes you, you're just so weary. I said, for a pastor, for a senior pastor, the end of the year is the hardest time of the year. Because the end of the year, it's time for you to seek the Lord and pray, okay, Lord, now add the pandemic to that. Then you don't know what actually, you know, what we're going to do. You know, like next week, We'll expect lesser people here. More, most of you will be online, at, at least 50% of the people here. <coughs> so <coughs> 2022, what do we expect in 2022? Well, obviously, Isaiah 22, 22, you know, and if you know that verse, that verse is going to speak volumes right now. It says, I will place on his shoulder the key of the, to the house of David. What he opens, no man can shut. And what he shuts, no one can open. How many of you know what wants to shut the door of sickness in your family? You want to shut the door of cancer in your family, right? You want, because sometimes they say it's, 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 it's because of your genes. How many of you know you can shut the door in your genes and so nobody can have cancer in your family? Amen? How many of you know God is saying this is the time to exercise the authority to open and shut doors? And I think that's so important. Now, Every year, I'm invited to this gathering of prophets in Texas with Cindy Jacobs and Chuck Pierce and a lot of the other prophets. And every year, 
I turn it down. We cannot go because of some reason. And the last, I think, two years ago, before the pandemic, I sent her a message. Uh, Cindy, I think I can go this year. And then the pandemic hit. So I still can't go. But every year, this year, they gather again, last October. And they sent me this list of what they discern as prophetic words for 2022. Now, I'm going to read portions of it. Now, if you want, I can post the whole prophetic word, uh, list of prophetic words in our Facebook page so you can read it to your, the whole text. But I only picked out what I think is going to be relevant for us. So I posted some of it here on the screen. It says there, 2022, God is finishing promises from the last generation to begin new ones. The year 2022 is going to be a year of open doors. Doors of bondage will be closed. Now, if you agree, you can give the Lord a clap offering. If you don't agree, you don't have to. Now, listen, new job, new opportunities for job, wealth, business, startups, and blessings will open, including the buying and selling of property. I like that very much. Amen. Amen. There were prophecies and things you felt would happen in 2020, but they got delayed. The spirit of delay will be broken, and when the blessings manifest, they will be do so with double blessings. Amen. Give the Lord a clap offering. Now, it goes on to explain. Now, again, let me explain. This is a gathering of uh, all prophetic people from all over the world, not just America. The number 22 is the most, imp uh, most significant numbers for us today. This year signifies alignment. February 22, 2022. I don't know if that's a Sunday or a Monday or what. We'll see the alignment of 222. We are not to worship numbers or use them as astrological forecast. Numbers, all the more, are, although are significant in Scripture. The Lord is going to do extraordinary, visible things in 2022, including things in nature. The Hebrew alphabet is made of 22 letters. Jesus, Jewish people will see that Jesus is the Messiah on a large scale this coming year. There will be a great number of harvests in Israel. In addition, in addition, this will be a back to the Bible year with a fresh emphasis of the scripture. I like that. The number 22 also has special emphasis on giving and sharing. Generous giving will result in the completion of many building projects. Those who have longed to fund projects will see great increase in their finances so they can give what is in their heart to advance the kingdom of God. This will include giving to the poor and a move towards eradication of systemic poverty. Jesus quoted Psalm 22 from the cross. In the midst of great pain and suffering, the persecuted church will be a beacon of light to the world. Some nations will go from tyranny to democracy in surprising moves. Now, I've seen, you know, I've talked to some people from Saudi Arabia, and Saudi Arabia is one of the most open countries in the world today. I couldn't believe it, how uh, people are able to go to church and how the, the present king of Saudi Arabia is very open to the freedom of religion. That's amazing. Now, the next phrase of the prophetic word is called limitless. Some have gotten stuck from the pain and uncertainties of this last season. However, in the midst of the challenging time, God is going to cause to understand that we are limitless in what we believe for from God. Then there will be breakthrough of the ceilings that stop your faith. Faith on new levels will be critical in this season. There will be unstoppable breakthroughs. How many believe this will be a year of unstoppable breakthroughs? Unstoppable breakthroughs. Breakthroughs that will not be locked down. Breakthroughs that will not be prevented. In order to manifest our God-given abilities, we must have the faith in God. There will be accelerations of our ability to feel His presence in our lives as well. Now, let me land this whole message. It strikes me so much that in a time that we need to hear from the Lord, this is a time we have a famine of hearing the voice of the Lord. I had an increasing impression that God's people do not know really how to hear the word of the Lord. Or somehow has been distracted by the voices of culture, voices of entertainment, Voices of opinions of other people around us, and that we have canceled the word of God, that we have actually criticized, broke it down, and yet we have never even listened to it. Perhaps we have been filling up ourselves with verbal junk food 
and have dulled our appetites for real food by the profusion of much speaking of our own that leaves us sated and not bloated. Therefore, we suffer malnutrition in the midst of seeming plenty. It's the parable of the starving baker. Certainly, we lack the evidence, you know. It's been two years in the pandemic. We've been locked down. Sometimes there's nothing else to do except listen to the voice of the Lord. And yet, we have allowed ourselves to be distracted rather than took the opportunity. Sometimes I, told, I tell my wife, I have fears that when the pandemic is over, everybody just goes back to their old lifestyle. And never have thought that God was wanting to speak more than any time in the history of the world. Wanting to speak as if God looked down. You know, when I, when I was, when I, you know, when my boys were young and I wanted to speak to them. And I see this, you know, uh, Paul doing this to, to our granddaughter, Sam. When she doesn't want to listen, you know what he does? He, sit, he kneels down in front of her, holds her face. Look at me in my eyes. Listen to me. I believe God is doing that all over the world right now for the last two years. That he sat us down, looked us straight in the face, look, look at my eyes, look at my face. I need to tell you something. You need to change your life. And yet very few people I've heard have ever come to the realization, I need to change my life. I need to get back to God. Surely God's word requires attentiveness and retention. You don't need to just pay attention. You need to retain what he says. When, my, when you hear my voice, the Bible says, harden not your hearts. God's word will not allow our indifference. He will not stand up for our indifference. There is not a hearing. Then there will be certainly a hardening. If there's no hearing, there will be a hardening of hearts. We are not hearing, but we are trying to distract ourselves. Regain, brothers and sisters, let's regain our expectancy to hear the voice of God. This is the year of unstoppable breakthrough for 2022. And therefore, more we need to hear the voice of God. Amen? We must hear the voice of the Lord. How many of us are numb, unresponsive, not reflecting, not internalizing, and not doing the Word of God. The Thessalonians, if you read the whole book of Thessalonians, they came from idolatry into real commitment to the Lord. And it says there specifically, they came from idols and gave up idol worship because they heard the voice of the Lord and they treated it as the Word of God. And they become one of the best churches in the New Testament. You know why? Because they don't only get excited about hearing the voice of the Lord, they become excited about the coming of the Lord. And when you're excited to hear the voice of the Lord, you'll be excited that He's coming, right? You'll be expecting the Lord to come any time. Oh, how I would wish He would come from the clouds and come with His angels and bring His rewards to all the saints and the marriage supper of the bride will, will be happening because Jesus Christ is coming soon. Amen? How I wish we would desire that with all our hearts. A whole world is ignoring God's word. A whole world is ignoring the word of the Lord. We can't even say and claim the word. He sent his word and healed them. Psalms 107 verse 20. Because we are not even sure God would heal. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Have you been ignoring his voice? Have you devalued his voice? Have you exchanged his voice for the voice of culture? It's the voice of modernists and humanists and philanthropists of all those philosophies around us. Or maybe we have disobeyed what God has spoken to us many years ago and we've been running away. It's time to get back. It's time to recalibrate. It's time to restore back to His Word, back to His voice. And I believe when we say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. God is going to speak. Amen. Amen. Samuel, he confessed his availability. Moses, he laid down his staff. Abraham, he left his comfort zone. Jeremiah consecrated his youthfulness. And David longed to be with God to hear his voice for the rest of his life. Because they all said, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. 
it's, stay down, it's time to lay down what is in your hand. Your identity, your income, and your influence for the glory of God. Amen? Can I ask, oh, bow our heads right now. And let's ask the Lord. You know, God can speak to all of us at the same time. You don't have to fall in line to hear the word of the Lord. God can speak to you right on your chair, right where you are. God can speak to Samuel. He can speak to any child. He can speak to your son. He can speak to your daughter. If your son and daughter is running away from God, do you know just a voice from the Lord can bring him or her back? If you are sick, if you feel that you have been abandoned or you're discouraged, do you know that a voice from the Lord can restore you? If you're, if you're making a decision on your job, on your career, do you know that if you hear the voice of the Lord, it can sustain you for the rest of your life? Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Oh, how God longed to hear that statement from His people. How God's heart cries for people who would say, Lord, speak. I am listening. I will block out the voices around me. I will block out the opinions around me and my own opinion. I would like to hear you, Lord. If you are ex hungry, if you're expecting, God will speak. God will speak. Holy Spirit, can you can you just cultivate the hardness of our hearts and teach us to focus on you and be willing to remember what you say. I know, brothers and sisters, when you go home, you'll even probably forget this message. But I do ask you, when you get home, go to your secret place, the quietness of your room, of your house, of your bed, and just ask the Lord, Lord, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. 2022, the year of breakthrough. I want to have breakthrough. No longer shall there be a delay of breakthrough. No longer will the enemy block that breakthrough. For we declare this morning in the name of Jesus that every single one who needs breakthrough in their families, in their homes, and in their lives will have their breakthrough in 2022. And we declare that in the name of Jesus. Speak, Lord, to your servants who are listening. And I know, Lord, it will be a powerful word. There will be no hunger of hearing your voice in this church. There will be no hunger of listening to your voice, Lord. The people who hear this message, we come to you, Lord. We believe the best is yet to come for 2022. We do not believe the reports of the news that it's going to get worse. We do not believe the economy's report. We do not believe what the world leaders are saying. We believe what you say in your word, Lord, that the kingdom of God is going to expand. It will continue to expand. And that nothing is ever going to stop it because we are all belong to the kingdom of God. And in the name of Jesus, we declare this in our homes. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in our homes. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. I pray that you let this word settle in our hearts today. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Can we give the Lord a clap offering? I want us to sing a song first. Let's all stand up and just sing a song to the Lord right now. We'll fill our hearts with worship. Sing, I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night.